Welcome to how to create a medieval metallic text effect in Adobe Photoshop. Learn how to create this reflective and shiny looking metal effect that you can use in your own projects and designs. We'll take you through step by step on how to create this effect using Photoshop's layer styles and settings. So before we begin, make sure to check out Envato Elements. With one subscription, you'll have unlimited access to assets such as the ones we'll be showcasing in this video. Millions of creative digital assets with simple commercial licensing. And you can cancel at any time. Subscribe now with the link in the description below. So let's start by going over what assets we need to complete this tutorial. First, we need an appropriate fantasy looking font. Then we'll need a brick style background. And then finally, the metallic pattern to use for our effect. Once you have all of that, let's get started in Photoshop. Open up your brick layer background in Adobe Photoshop. And we're just going to make sure that the image size is set to 850 by 600 pixels. Then we're going to go to the text tool, click anywhere on the background to open it up and then double click on the text layer here to change the text. So we're just going to type in anything that you want. So for this example, we're going to type in Calio and we want to make sure that we have set the text size to 354 at the top here and the font we have chosen Cardinal. Once you've done that, use the move tool to move it into the center of your composition, like so. Once we're happy with that, go over to the layers panel here and select your text layer. Right click on that and select blending options. This will open up the layer styles window. Now from here, we want to go over to pattern overlay, select that and inside here, we want to go to the box with the patterns in and then we want to open it up and select the dirty metal pattern that we installed previously. Now to install the pattern, just double click on the pattern file and it will automatically show up in your patterns list. So from here, let's open it up like so and select the dirty metal pattern. And you should see in the preview window here, it has automatically been applied. Excellent. Now, once we've done that, let's go ahead and apply certain settings to our pattern overlay. So we want to set the scale here to 50% like that. And then from here, we want to go over to the bevel and emboss settings here. And we want to set some certain settings here as well. So over in style, we want to select inner bevel. Then in the technique here, we want to choose chisel hard. The depth, we want to increase it to 480% with a direction of up. And the size, we want to increase that to 24 pixels. Now you should be able to see that as we do these settings, you should see how that affects our text over here as well. Next, we want to uncheck global light and set an angle of 142 and an altitude of 32 degrees. Then we want to check the anti-aliased box here and choose a highlight mode of color dodge with the color white, make sure that the color here is white. Just simply click on the color box here and choose white like so. And then in the shadow mode here, we want to make sure that the shadow mode is set to hard light and a color of black like so. Now for the opacity settings for highlight mode, we want to make sure the opacity is set to 85%. And for the shadow mode, we want to set the opacity to 61% like so. 
Now, whilst we're still in the bevel and emboss tab, let's go ahead and create a custom gloss contour. So to do this, just open up the gloss contour settings, click on the cog button here, select a new contour and name it whatever you want. We're just going to name it custom for now. And then with that done, make sure that you select your custom contour from the list here and then click on the gloss contour square and this will open up the contour editor. Now we want to add six points to this particular curve. So to add points, click anywhere on the curve like so. And then we want to add certain input and output percentage points. So for this first point, we want an input of 18% with an output of 42. Then we want to create a third point. And for this third point here, we want to create an input of 60% and an output of 28. Now for the fourth point, let's create an input of 73 and an output of 91. And now for the fifth point here, let's create an input of 89 and an output of 37. And then for the last point here, let's go ahead and click and drag it all the way down like so. So now all together we have six points, one, two, three, four, five, six. And you can see how that affects our metallic uh, layer style here like so. So once you're happy with that, go ahead and click OK. And then from here, we want to go over to contour, click on that. And we want to add a, another contour here with the following settings. Check the anti-aliased box here and set the range from 100 to 50. And then again, we want to create a new custom contour. So click on the cog button here, select a new contour. And let's name this custom 02. Select OK and then click on the box here again. And now we're going to add two new points here. Click on the line to add our first point with an input of 14 and an output of 51. And then we want to check the corner box here like so. Add another point here with an input of 80 and an output of 39. Again, check the corner box. And then for the fourth point here, let's go ahead and drag it all the way down like so. Excellent. Once you're happy with that, go ahead and click OK. And we're going to move over to the stroke settings. So click on stroke, set the size to two pixels, the position to center, and the blend mode is set to normal. Set the opacity to 100% and a fill type here of a gradient. And then we want to set the style from linear, which is the default, to diamond. Now for the angle, let's set that to minus 48 degrees. And then we want to check the dither box and set the scale here to 150%. Now let's go ahead and click on the gradient bar, which will then open up the gradient editor. And then we want to create a few gradient uh, color stops and opacity stops. So let's start with the opacity stops. So to create an opacity stop, just click on the top of the gradient bar like so. And we're going to create six opacity stops with an opacity of 0% in these locations. So the first location, which is this one here, is going to be at a location of 34. And then the next one will be at a location of 55. And then the next one will be at a location of 78. And then the last one will be at 87, like so. And then we also want to set the first opacity stop here 
at 0% and also the last one at 0% as well. Then we're going to create five more transparency stops with an opacity of 100. So the first one will be at 100% at a location of 10. And then the next one will be at a location of 19. The next one will be at around 40. The next one will be at 67. And then the final one here will be at 92. So your transparency stops should look something like this. Next, we're going to create the color stops. So the first color stop here, so let's use this one, is going to have a color of 23253A, like so. And this will be at a location of 10. Then just click below here to create the next color. And then this color will have a color of DDD6FF. And this will be at a location of 40. The next one here, let's create a new color, which will be 5F. 5D5B, like so. And this one will be at a location of 56. And then the last one, let's create a new color, which will be B7B7B7. And that will be at a location of 78%. So now your color gradient should look something like this. Click OK to accept that. And then the next step, we want to add an inner shadow. So let's go over to the inner shadow settings here. Set the blend mode to linear dodge. And let's put the color here to 7789A2. Click OK. The opacity here will be at 35%. Uncheck the use global light box and set the angle to 90 degrees. The distance will be at four pixels. The choke will be at 95% and the size will be at six pixels. Excellent. Now let's add an inner glow. So select the inner glow settings here and set the blend mode to linear burn. So that should be up here. The opacity will be at 16%. And then this color here will be 74726F. Click OK. The technique will be precise. And the source should be selected as edge and a choke of 100% with a size of 7 pixels. Now for the contour, let's select one of the preset contours here. So we want to select one which is called ring. So just hover over all of these contours until you find the one which is called ring, like so. And then we want to check the anti aliased box again with a range of 92%. Excellent. Now let's go ahead and add a satin effect. So select satin. And now we're going to change the modes here. So the first blend mode will be set to linear dodge. And we're going to change the color here to ECE8FF. Click OK to accept that. And then the opacity here will be at 53% with an angle of zero degrees. For the distance, let's change that to 24 pixels with a size of 32. And then again, make sure that the anti-aliased and invert boxes are checked. Excellent. Now, whilst we're still in the satin tab, let's go ahead and create a new custom gloss contour. So let's change this and name this to 03. 
and we're going to go ahead and change the settings of this one as well. So let's go ahead and add the first point, which is going to be an input of four degrees and an output of 85. Then for the next point, let's add an input of 22 and an output of 65. And then for the next one, we want an input of 75 and an output of 14. For the fifth one, an input of 80 and an output of 93. And then for the last point here, we want to make sure that the input is 100% and the output is set to zero. So it should look like this sort of M shape here, like so. Once you've got that, click OK. And then we want to add a color overlay. So select color overlay and let's change the settings here. So the blend mode, we want to set this to color burn and we want to change the color to 6D8096, click OK, and that should give it a nice bluish sort of color here. And we want to change this opacity and bring it down to about 51%. Excellent. Now let's add an outer glow. So select outer glow here, and let's change the settings here. So blend mode, we want to set this to linear dodge, the opacity, is at 71% with a noise of 1%. Let's change the color here to 8288B6. Click OK. The technique is softer with a spread of 0% and a size of 27. Let's go ahead and check the anti aliased box again and set the range here to 100% with a jitter of zero. And now finally, the final step, let's go to drop shadow and change the blend mode to linear burn. Change the color here to 010201. And the opacity here, we want to change this to 26%. Uncheck global light, so make sure that's not ticked, and then set the angle to minus 59 degrees with a distance of 13 pixels here, a spread of 17%, and a size of 18 pixels. And now, once you've finally done that, hit OK to apply all the blending options. Excellent! And here you have the final result. So that's it for this video. Feel free to use these layer style settings for your own logos and font designs. If you liked this video and would like to see more, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of any new and inspiring videos. If you're looking to learn even more, check out some of our other tutorials in the channel. So have fun and I'll see you next time on Tuts Plus.